Shot on video. For you that know me, you know that it is my favorite subgenre of film, especially horror films. Before it hit the home video market, shot on video was especially popular in soap operas and porn. But eventually it hit the home video market, and that's when a bunch of these shot on video films spread like wildfire. Before shot on video, there was Super 8. Many films of Super 8 came out, such as Things and Lethal Nightmare, but it was also very hard to shoot on Super 8. It was also more expensive because only about three minutes of film could cost more than a single VHS tape. You could be shooting maybe 30 minutes on film whereas video you could be shooting for three hours at the same price. Today, much like shot on video, Super 8 is a novelty. Some people still like to experiment with it, especially film students. Then came the VHS camera. It was way more efficient than Super 8. You could be shooting triple the time for half the price. There was filmmakers everywhere that just wanted to show their work, whether it was being serious to go right to the video market. Non-filmmakers would use shot on video for filming, you know, Christmas morning or graduation, but those serious ones took it one step farther and made actual films. Some of these films are absolutely praised in the horror genre, while others are thrown aside, and only for those rare few people that actually love this sort of thing. Today we have HD and 4K, but it definitely doesn't match what shot on video used to be. For me, the shot on video films were the films that made me want to become a filmmaker, and because of that, I own tons of them. So we did this a couple years ago, but my collection has since grown, so we're going to take a look once again at the shot on video films which I happen to own. I thought we would start here with some simple sets that would be great for anybody just starting to collect shot on video films. Many of these are public domain and you can find very easily online. These three right up here are all put out by Brentwood Entertainment and contain a couple of the Polony Brother films which either aren't on DVD today or are just on these packs right here. This one right here, called the Blood Hunt Pack, contains four films, one of them a Polony Brothers film called How to Slay a Vampire. This is a really different one for the Polony Brothers, it was their first one I believe they used Super VHS on, pretty much about two brothers who find a vampire in their attic, the vampire breaks loose and they're trying to run around town trying to stop it. Very weird. I can't really, trying to put this film together is like putting together a million piece puzzle. It is very, very strange, but in total, a fun Polony Brothers film, one not to take seriously. Another set right here is the Galaxy of Terror set. These contain two Polony Brothers film, Pralian Animal Predators, and Blood Red Planet. Haven't seen these ones in a while, but I remember really loving Blood Red Planet. Right here we have the Sleazy Slashers pack, again, put out by Brentwood Entertainment. This one contains, again, two Polony Brothers films, Dweller and Night Thirst. Dweller is one of my favorites about a group of bank robbers that take hostage in a house, and after that all bad shit starts happening. Night Thirst, I remember, is a vampire one, very vague in my memory what it's about, but I just love all these Polony Brothers films, because in total, the later ones, especially released on DVD and Blu-ray, are very great learning tools in what it takes to actually make a film. Now this is one set that I would recommend to anybody who wants to get into Todd Sheet films. This one is put out by Pendulum Pictures. This is called the Decrepit Crypt of Nightmares set. This one is a little bit harder to find um, from what I remember, but it has a handful of uh, Todd Sheep films, such as Dominion. This one is a very strange one about a boy who leads a cult, but very fun and a lot of uh, recurring Todd Sheep film actors in this one. Goblin, this is one that seems like a lot of fans love and it's a definite fun one, great shot on video film. This one is not a Todd Sheets film, but I don't remember if it's shot on video or not. It's a David Sterling film called Hell's Highway. Haven't seen that one in years, and I just can't remember if it's shot on video or not. Again, Hollywood Vampire is another one that I want to say is shot on video, but I can't remember. Nightmare Asylum is another Todd Sheets film, basically about somebody trapped inside of a haunted house. 
Again, really, really fun, bizarre one. Prehistoric Bimbos in Armageddon City. Not exactly a horror film, but just a fun Todd Sheets film to watch when you just want to laugh and have a good time. Zombie Rampage. This is one before Zombie Bloodbath, another Todd Sheet film. Absolutely, absolutely bizarre, but another fun shot on video film. Now, some of these films are easy to find on DVD. Other ones are very hard to find on DVD. And when you do come across a hard to find one, it can commence a pretty high price tag. And this is where you'll find a lot of these being sold on websites like iOffer.com for a pretty cheap price. And this is one example of one which is Used to be pretty hard to find on DVD, I just haven't got it, but now it's released by Massacre Video. This one is called 555, and shame on me for not having an actual DVD of it yet. But this is, again, another very, very, very bizarre shot on video film. Uh, directed by Wally Kaz, I believe his name is, but again, very strange, and this is one that a lot of fans really love when it comes to shot on video horror. When it comes to shot on video horror, you'll find a lot of these companies and distributors are very special in releasing them. Cam Motion Pictures, for example, is one of them. This is one of their most recent ones called America's Deadliest Home Video. I did a review of this, so if you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description below. But this is a, basically, if Bonnie and Clyde had a video diary, this is pretty much what it would be. Basically, a guy going cross-country filming his trip gets kidnapped by these bank robbers and he they make them film their whole uh, killing spree and robbing spree and it actually does have an old video store in this a massive video store amazing one just put out recently and I can't recommend that one enough it's almost like watching an old episode of cops then you have companies that really want to show tribute to uh, shot on video like this one right here this one is called American Gore Stories. This is volume four, best of shot on video. And I forgot who put this out exactly. Oh, SRS Cinema. This is another one you'll find a lot of shot on video films of. But this one has four films on it. You have The Vicious Sweet, Shattered Dead, The Pact, and Twisted Illusions. And when it comes to shot on video, you will recognize a lot of these uh, names, especially for directors like uh, Mark Polonia especially, uh, Ron Bonk is another one, Tim Ritter, but very awesome that people put time and effort into these old films to make them look very special, especially on the shelves. This one is one a lot of people talk about when it comes to especially the disturbing and obscure shot on video. This one is August Underground. There's three in the series. This is the first one. I still need to get the rest of them but it's basically people making their own snuff film on it, and this was uh, Fred Vogel's first film, I believe, put out by Totag Pictures. Very, very bizarre one. I still need to get my hands on the other ones. I don't know if those are shot on video or not, but one of these days I'll find out. The next one up is Beauty Queen Butcher, and Cam Motion Pictures back in a couple years ago had this retro 80s horror collection line, which features a lot of films you will see coming up soon. This one is Beauty Queen Butcher, and from what I reckon, from what I remember, I believe this one might have been shot on beta, but this is pretty much about a girl who gets picked on, runs for a, a beauty contest, loses, and the people in the contest are just so horrible to her, she snaps and goes on a killing spree, but this is a very, very fun one, Cam Motion Pictures. Uh, does amazing jobs when it comes to putting these films out on DVD, especially with the content. This next one right here, this one was put out by uh, Slasher Video, another company that likes putting out these shot on video films. This one is called Boarding House. To my knowledge, this is the longest shot on video film that I have ever seen. Very long. Uh, this one, once again, this, this is a sort of company that loves having a bunch of features on this film. But this is another one that a lot of fans seem to love with a passion, and for good reasons. It's a very good film, and I think this one might be out of print right now. It might be on Blu-ray. I am not 100%, but if you could find it, that is definitely one to put in your collection. I would say besides the American shot on video films, the German shot on video films are absolutely amazing. This one is called The Burning Moon. This one was put out by Intervision. Um, this one was directed by Olaf Ittenbach, who has done other shot-on-video films similar to director Andreas Schnaas. 
This one is an anthology and very, very, very bizarre films in this one. Pretty much one focuses on a girl who makes a date with a serial killer. Another one is about a priest who just is a rapist murderer and very, very bizarre. The guy telling the story you see in the beginning, which I believe is Olaf Ittenbach, is just some strung out druggy, you know, punk rock dude, but very bizarre film, but it is truly one of my favorites and probably one of the best well done shot on video films and there's features on there which shows the making of the film. Another one by Slasher Video, this one is Cemetery Sisters. This one was directed by um, Nick Millard and this one is very similar to Death Nurse where it's two girls who marry different guys, kill them, and take their insurance to get money off of it. These films are very weird, especially Nick Millard's shot on video because all of them use stock footage from cr either criminally insane or crazy fat Ethel, which is very weird. Even the uh, title sequence in the beginning and end is from those films. Very weird and very interesting to have in the collection. This is one put out by SRS Cinema. This is Channel 13. This is actually a lost film put out by uh, Sabrosa, but this was a Polonia Brothers film, which includes a shot on video version of Halloween Night and some other films on here, but Mark Poloni actually talked about in the uh, making of how he shot parts of it years later just to fill in the blanks with a lot of this, but this is one of those occurrences where now you'll see a lot of these films put out on Blu-ray, and I've heard people talk about how putting shot on video films on Blu-ray actually reduces the quality. So far I haven't really seen much of that, but I'm still optimistic, but Again, another gem to have from the uh, Plony Brothers. The next one up here, this one was put out by Cinemassacre, uh, the same people that do the Angry Video Game there. This one is called the Cinemassacre Film Collection. Uh, it's called Cinematic Catastrophes, and these aren't actual films. These are films that uh, James Rolfe did when he was much younger, like uh, Kung Fu Werewolf from Outer Space is one, um, Cinemaphobia is another one. I don't remember if Curse of the Cat Lover's Grave is one, but these are perfect examples of, you know, people at a very young age, who's very young when he made these films, you know, doing whatever it takes to make a movie. And I do believe these are still available on um, ScrewAttackStore.com, so if you can find those and you want to see exactly, you know, how these people started, I'd say definitely check that out. And I really don't consider these shot on video because a lot of segments were shot with uh, either 16mm film or 35mm. Uh, but you can consider especially a lot of the early CKY films as um, shot on video since most of them were shot with VHS cameras. But I'm pretty sure you guys know what CKY is all about. Bam Margera before... Uh, Jackass and Diesel of Bam, bunch of uh, stunt videos and whatnot. The next one up here, this is Death Factory. I haven't seen this one in a long time. Uh, this is with Tiffany Shepis and Ron Jeremy. This one was put out by Brain Damage Films and a very, very weird film about somebody with like these Freddy Krueger like hands. I haven't seen this one in a while and I do believe this one is streaming on uh, YouTube, on the Brain Damage Films YouTube. So if you want to see it for the first time on uh, online, I would say check it out there. Then we got a couple more from uh, Slasher Video. These are the Death Nurse films. And these are another one. These two are two directed once again by Nick Millard. And this film is pretty much a, a girl and her brother who own this clinic where they pretty much take patients in from the county and kill them and take their insurance out of it. And once again, these have the same exact, uh, well, it's used in dream segments, but the same exact stock footage from Crazy Fat Ethel and um, Criminally Insane. But I like how it has the um, special features on here. Jesus Tehran from Slasher does an incredible job. And then, of course, we have Death Nurse 2, which follows in the same pattern, pretty much, where it has the same sort of flow to the film and the same ending. And once again, same stock footage. And I do believe the DVDs are out of print right now, and I think they're out on Blu-ray right now. This one, I don't know if it's shot on video or not. Uh, this is Demon Seduction, another one put out by Brain Damage Films. Don't really know 
a whole lot about it, but from what I remember, it was shot on video. This one right here, another one put out by Massacre, this is Demon Queen. I don't remember a whole lot about this one besides it's shot on video, but once again, Lewis Justin from Massacre Video absolutely kills it with these films being put on DVD. And then we have another version of uh, Dweller. This one actually, Mark Polonius' son, Anthony Polonius, sent me a couple years ago. This is the special edition, which never was released on uh, DVD, but thank you once again, Anthony, for sending this to me. And just amazing to have, especially for shot on video because a lot of these films do get put out on DVD and other ones just sit in closets for years and years. Here's a pretty interesting one I have to say. This is the Films of Chester Novell Turner collection and this set includes uh, both Black Devil Doll from Hell and Tales from the Quad Dead Zone and both of these films directed by Chester Novell Turner are insane to find on on uh, VHS, especially Tales from the Quad Dead Zone, which um, at one point sold for about $800 online just for the VHS, but the lengths that Lewis Justin went into putting these films out on DVD are incredible, and it does have, uh, you know, commentary tracks and behind the scenes with uh, Shirley Jones and uh, Chester Novell Turner from the films but absolutely incredible, and it always makes me happy to see how much work and uh, love they put into putting these films out on DVD. The next one right here, this is put out by Unearthed Films. This is uh, Flower of Flesh and Blood. This is one of the guinea pig films, probably the most famous of the guinea pig films. Basically, about a samurai who just hacks and sla slashes at his victim very 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 real effects and it's just a very disgusting film but it's one of those besides you know the americans and the germans the japanese put out a lot of these uh shot on video gore films back in the 80s and 90s but this is one i think a lot of people know about another one here from Sabrosa, we have uh lethal nightmare this was actually a uh remake of this film right here, Hallucinations. Hallucinations was their second film right before Splatter Farm, and this was shot on video, and it's just a fun film to watch. You know, Mark Plony and John Plony is in there, uh, Todd Smith, who played Jeremy and Splatter Farm's in it, but Lethal Nightmare was actually the remake of Hallucinations, and this one was actually shot on Super 8. But again, an amazing release put out by Sabrosa. This one right here, this is a bootleg that I found off of I Offer. And this one is called Heavy Metal Massacre. This one is probably the worst shot on video film that I've ever seen. And um, it's just, it, I don't even remember most of this film because it's so weird. There's death, there's cocaine, and it just makes me wonder when this film is actually going to end. But it's an interesting one, and I know this VHS is, you know, very, very, very rare to find. This one, VH Shitfest used to put out a lot of these, uh, you know, DVDs and VHS. This one is called Hell Roller. This is probably a runner-up next to Heavy Metal Massacre of one of the worst shot-on video films I found. Basic basically, a serial killer in a wheelchair. Very, very strange. And it does have some special features on here, but I really wish VH Shitfest would put out some more. They're also responsible for the Adjust Your Tracking documentary on VHS. Then we got right here, this one was put out by Sabrosa a couple years ago. This is Hellgate, The House That Screamed Part 2. The original House That Screamed was shot on 16mm, and this one was put out on, um, shot on video. But again, a very weird one. John McBride is another one in this film, but very, 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 uh, it's been a long time since I've seen that one. Another one put out by Sabrosa, this is Feeders. Uh, this is the first film, I believe, that, uh, the Plony Brothers did with John McBride, basically about an alien invasion, and then Feeders 2 Sleigh Bells, which is kind of like a Christmas takeoff of the first film, but very interesting sci-fi type, uh, films by the Plony Brothers. Another one from Massacre Video right here, this one goes under a bunch of different names. There's Anthropophagus 2000, uh, Maneater 2000, uh, Grim Reaper 2000. Uh, the one I have right here is Maneater 2000. This is by uh, Andreas Shanas, and this is probably the one film of his that 
has actually a legitimate story besides random gore shots, and this is probably my fa one of my favorite uh, Andreas Chanaz films just for that reason. Basically, a family gets stuck out to sea, and the husband just wants to eat so bad he kills uh, his wife and his kid, eats them, and then just lives off the land killing and eating people and very strange movie but it actually has a plot which I do like a lot of these films don't have plots and just rely on gore but some of them do strive and then they just fall miserably but the ones with stories I could actually really respect this one right here this is a very strange one put out by uh, Dead Alive Productions and this one is called Mr. Ice Cream Man I know Cool Looter loves talking about this one pretty much a just a very strange ice cream man preying on the kids in this neighborhood. Very, very strange and uneasy film. And this one is also pretty out of print and goes for a pretty penny online, excuse me. Next one here, this was originally put out by a company called Astaroth Entertainment and it was put on DVD by VidEvil Video. This one is called The Necrophiles. This is uh, written by Todd Jadurslin, the same guy who did the Faces of Gore films and it was directed by Matt Jasel, basically about a rapist serial killer who rises from the grave and starts raping and killing people again. Very strange, but the gore is actually very good in this film. Um, if you could find it, I say it's worth checking. This one right here, this was put out by Troma, and I know a lot of people who love Shot on Video know this film. This is Redneck Zombies, just a very, very weird, obscure zombie fic flick put out by Troma and also shot on video but if you could find this this is this is pretty easy to find I would say check it out this is another one that is pretty hard to find on DVD I was glad I could find one copy uh, this one's called Savage Harvest I haven't seen this one in years uh, in fact I don't remember image put this out and it's just a very weird film and I need to watch this one again, but I do remember liking it a lot. These ones right here are absolute mind fucks of shot on video films. This first one is called Schizophrenic, the Horror Mangler. And I re-watched this one yesterday, and this is absolutely bizarre about some drug addict, schizophrenic, who just loses his mind and just goes on a raping and killing spree. And this guy is absolutely bizarre it just fucks with your mind so much and actually they did a sequel of this uh, this DVD I forget who put it out um, cutthroat video never heard of them but they put it out but eventually uh, brain damaged films re-released the film with the sequel necromaniac necromaniac is even worse in you know the disturbing factor it is just it, it goes way farther than Schizo, but Necromaniac, this one, I don't know if it's out of print or not, but if you could find it, I'd say give this one a watch. Another one that was put out by Intervision, I haven't seen this one in years, this one is called Sledgehammer, and from what I remember, it was a decent one, not one of my favorites, but when it comes to shot on video, either if it's good or if it's bad, I'll buy any of them. Another one from uh, Slasher Video, this one is called Splatter Architects of Fear. This is pretty much a weird documentary almost. A uh, movie within a movie as it says on just special effects and it's a really fun, really weird movie and the effects are really good. Um, if this one is still available on DVD, this is one I would highly recommend. Another one right here is uh, Splatter Beach. This wasn't a shot on video film. It does have, uh, you know, the Plony Brothers did direct this, but on the DVD it does include uh, hallucinations, which for a while was the first and only way to uh, find the film on DVD. Another Plony Brothers film right here, another one they did with John McBride, this one is Terror House. Um, forget who put SRS Cinema did put this out. Uh, this is an older DVD, I'm not sure if it's out of print or not, but I just remember it was one of those films where they did in a very, very, uh, quick speed of time. Haven't seen this one in years, but I always love these films with um, John McBride in it. This one right here is probably one of the most uh, rare shot on video films I own in my collection. 
uh, this is the Violent Shit trilogy, and these are films that were directed by Andreas Schnaas, and these are German films about this guy named Karl the Butcher who just goes on this killing spree. It's one of those examples of German shot on video films that are just gratuitous gore films, and this is one of them. It has three DVDs in here. The only downside is this set was put out by, I forget who put it out. Uh, some German company put this one out, and it's only been available on the set for years, which is very weird because a lot of companies have been talking about re-releasing Violent Shit on DVD in North America, and Violent Shit Part 1 is where everything starts off with Carl the Butcher. Violent Shit Part 2, I really didn't like that one a lot, and then Violent Shit 3 just gets even weirder. Uh, it has an alternate title in the United States, but there was also a Violent Shit Part 4, which I do have right here, and this one was not shot on video, it was shot years later. It's called uh, Violent Shit 4.0, Carl the Butcher vs. Axe, and for some reason it's the only one I could really pick up on because it is uh, in English, and... You know, it's just not gratuitous gore over and over again, which I don't mind. I just wish I could understand what they're saying. But these films are perfect examples of German shot on video from the 80s and 90s. But once again, talking about the set, this one has been out of print for a number of years and commands a pretty good price online. Um, they were talking about years and years ago Shriek Show. I believe putting this one out on DVD, but as you can see, it's a limited edition. Mine's 938 of 999, but really hope somebody would put this one out on DVD one day. This one right here, this was one another one put out by Camotion Pictures. This is the WNUF Halloween special. Uh, it was directed by Chris Lamartine, and the thing that's really special about it was it was shot in I believe 2012 or 2013 and it's an absolute throwback. It's basically a news channel who's covering a tour on Halloween night of this haunted house where a bunch of murders took place in years ago, and they have these old commercials that they shot, and this film is absolutely fantastic. I love playing this film at Halloween time. Uh, like I said, it is available from Cam Motion Pictures, so if you can get this one, definitely check it out. Another one I got here, this is a Andrei Shinas film called Zombie 90 Extreme Pestilence. Uh, this one was re-released on DVD in uh, 2009 by uh, Cineclub. And this is pretty much about a group of doctors who uh, experience a zombie epidemic and are trying how to uh, stop it. But it's a very, very strange film. Uh, but it doesn't stop getting weirder because there was this version put out by Shakarama called Zombie Doom. Uh, this is the original, this is the alternate title to uh, Violent Shit Part 3. Uh, it does have Violent Shit 3 on it and as a special feature it does have Zombie 90. And this DVD for Zombie 90 has some of the worst but funniest dubbing to any film I have ever seen. That is why I love Zombie 90 so much more. And I don't know if this is still for sale or not, but if you could find it, definitely find it. The dubbing is absolutely horrible, but the gore in these films are absolutely incredible. So I actually brought a handful of these shot on video films with me to school, um, and they didn't fit into the last cut just because they weren't there with me at the time, but I thought I'd show them to you because these are some of the films that really, really um, inspired me to create films. These are some of the films that I'll watch, I'll listen to the commentaries when I'm doing work, or especially when I'm editing. Uh, listening to the commentaries behind the scenes really helps, so I'm going to show you some of the ones that I brought to school with me that didn't make it in the last cut. The first one I have is part of this Ripper Blood Pack, and this comes with three films. It comes with uh, Tom Savini in The Ripper, uh, not shot on video. The main reason I got this is for the film Blood Cult. And Blood Cult is one of the more mainstream um, shot on video films. It was one of the, from what I remember, it was the first shot on video film to get uh, a mainstream release. 
or mainstream the video stores that is and it's pretty much about a cult who kills people on this college campus and the cult will leave a pendant for the demon k uh, by the bodies and there's detectives going around looking for the cult and the cult is also after the detectives really really cool shot on video film and it comes with the sequel uh, Revenge and this one from what I remember I don't think it was shot on video maybe Super VHS, I'm not 100%. The last time I saw this, it didn't seem um, shot on video to me, but Revenge is also a really good film. Pretty much picking up where the last film left off. Really good effects as the last time, and the music in both of these is fantastic. Uh, this set, from what I remember, used to be out of print, but I'm pretty sure VCI has released them separately onto their own DVDs, and I think Blu-ray maybe. But for any shot on video fan, Blood Cult is definitely one to watch. Another one from Cam Motion Pictures, this is Cannibal Camp Out. This is actually John McBride's first film that he'd done back in 1987 uh, about a group of kids who go out camping and these redneck cannibals stalk them and eventually kill them and eat them. Really, really low budget film. Uh, the gore in this though is probably some of the most amazing realistic gore that I've seen in any shot on video film and the one thing that I like about this that Cam Motion Pictures did really well is they have a lot of features especially with these um, retro 80s horror collection titles uh, the special features on it are amazing usually get commentaries uh, this one has a commentary with John McBride and Mark Polonia um, there's also a behind the scenes with um, John McBride, Gene Robbins who worked on the film uh, one or two of the actors, I'm pretty sure, really great behind the scenes on this one. And this is one that a lot of people don't like just because they don't like the story, I'm pretty sure. But I know that everybody who's seen this, they definitely do like the gore. And here we have John McBride's second film. This is Woodchipper Massacre. This came out in 1988. Um, this is actually not a horror film. It's more of a dark comedy. John McBride even said in the commentary uh, with Mark Polonia, actually, that he didn't want to do, you know, a second Cannibal Camp Out. His main love was for, you know, sitcoms and comedies. And this is ultimately what he wanted to do, but it does have definitely a really dark vibe to it about a group of kids, their father goes home, or uh, goes away on business for the weekend, and their aunt comes to look out for them. Their aunt's like a real pain in the ass. Uh, it's actually John McBride's mother who plays the aunt in the film. And the kid, played by Tom Cassiello, gets a Rambo knife in the mail. She disapproves of it, tries to take it away, and the kid stabs him. They're freaking out, and they decide to dispose of her body in the wood chipper. Uh, really, no blood and gore. Maybe one drop of blood in one scene. But overall, just a really, really, really fun one. And the music in all these John McBride films are absolutely amazing. Next one up, this is uh, the Polony Brothers' first film that got attention from distributors. This is Splatter Farm, one of my favorites. Uh, about two brothers who go to visit their aunt on a farm. And the aunt has a handyman played by Todd Smith, who is in a couple more Polony Brother films, who is just this real degenerate uh, necrophilia character. Uh, the film is definitely not the best shot on video film, but it's one of the best for me. Uh, there's commentaries with Mark and John Polonia, uh, behind the scenes uh, features where they go back to the farm 20 years later, and they do have some. Uh, 8mm films from their earlier years, but Splatter Farm is definitely one of my favorites from the uh, Camp Retro 80s line. The next one, of course, everybody knows this one who knows shot on video, Video Violence. This is Gary Cohen's film, and like with the basement set, he actually uh, signed that for me. But Video Violence, another amazing one. Uh, video Store, who gets submissions in the Dropbox for basically homemade snuff films, and uh, the owner of the video store and the wife are trying to figure out what's going on. Amazing music overall. The music in this is absolutely fantastic. And the last one I have with me, probably my favorite shot on video film of all time, Todd Sheets' Zombie Bloodbath Trilogy. Part 1 and 2 are shot on video. Part 1, I believe, was uh, regular VHS. Part 2 was super VHS, and I know part 3 uh, was shot digitally. But 
The two of the films are definitely my favorite. Part three, not considered shot on video, and really not my favorite out of the films. Uh, part one, uh, nuclear plant has a meltdown. Uh, years later, they build homes over the plant, and zombies get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, regenerated. And the gore in this film is absolutely disgusting. Some of Todd Sheet's best early work. Part two is definitely a lot more serious and a lot darker. Music in both of them is incredible. The gore in the second one, I believe, is a lot more hardcore than the first one in when it comes to content. But amazing, can't recommend these enough. Uh, I know this DVD is out of print, but if you could find it, definitely get it. So that's it for the DVDs. Now I'm gonna show you some of my re-releases and original tapes of some of these shot on video films. The first one, this was put out by SRS Cinema. This is Church of the Dam. This is actually the Polonia Brothers first uh, shot on video film before Hallucinations and Splatter Farm. Um, oh, I do believe Channel 13 predates that, I'm not 100%. But this is pretty much about cops trying to hunt down a death cult. And it is a very, very strange film. It does have the VHS in here, but it also does have a DVD copy, which I really do like. And it does have an um, introduction from Mark Polonia. But these have been out of print for quite a while. They're very limited. Uh, as you can see, mine is 34 out of 60. So if you can find these anywhere, definitely get them. Uh, this one, this was another limited one put out by BH Shitfest. This is Attack of the Mutant Roadkill and Vampire Zombies from Beyond the Grave. And Johnny Dickey did the uh, artwork for this one. And another, I haven't seen this one in years, but this was definitely a extreme weird film and it does have two bonus films Groundhog's Day Massacre 1 and 2 and some other extras but you know I really wish that uh, Dan over at VH Shitfest would you know start doing these again and it does have some uh, I think this was from some sort of newspaper article about the film or something in uh, video stores about it but just detail like that I absolutely love for a lot of these uh, newer releases of these old films. Before the DVD came out I actually do have the uh, WNUF Halloween special on VHS and while some people might say this is probably the worst VHS release you've seen, this just adds to the uh, it adds to the obscurity because this film was said to be locked in uh, news archives and being released like this is absolutely incredible. I believe they still sell these on alternativecinema.com so if you want it on VHS as well definitely get that. Another one that Cam Motion Pictures put out, this is the basement set and actually Gary Cohen who directed the video violence films actually autographed this one to me but this does have a lost Super 8 film called The Basement on here. It does also have uh, John McBride's Cannibal Camp out uh, it has Video Violence Parts 1 and 2, and it has uh, Gary Cohen's film Captives, which has been released on DVD for the first time. But an absolutely amazing set, and it does come with a uh, VHS in here, but absolutely incredible. This is still available online for a pretty affordable price, so for anybody who loves these sort of big box new releases, this is definitely one to have in the collection. Over here, this is my one complete, or one of my few complete shot on video films. This is Cannibal Camp Out. Uh, this was John McBride's first uh, film he done. And this one is put out by Donna Michelle. And another excellent example of people that just want to go out and make a movie. Uh, basically a group of kids are in the woods camping and these redneck cannibals just kill them and eat them but the gore in this film is absolutely incredible some of the most realistic looking gore for a shot on video film that I've ever seen um, this one is also available on DVD this one isn't too rare to find these days um, I think I only got this for about five dollars on Amazon these aren't as rare as other ones but if you could find this definitely get it it is very worth having in the collection and over here we have wood chipper massacre this is john mcbride's second film uh put out by donna michelle as well and unfortunately i didn't get this one complete this is from a video store but the thing about wood chipper massacre on vhs it's so much more harder to find on vhs than cannibal 
and as you can see it just pretty much comes like that for um, the video store release but I actually do have um, John McBride years ago sent me the original sleeve to uh, Witch of a Massacre autographed by him which I still haven't put on the uh, tape yet I don't think I'll ever do that just because it's autographed then we also have video violence on VHS and I I have heard that there was a big box version of Video Violence, this is the second release on VHS, but if you want to see a video of all of uh, my Video Violence stuff, definitely check out the uh, video in the description below, and this is again another amazing shot, this is probably one of the most famous shot on video movies out there, about a video store who keeps getting uh, these tapes with these actual snuff films incredible film and the music is absolutely incredible as well as the gore um, one that isn't terribly hard to find on, D on uh, VHS but it still you know commands a pretty penny then we have video violence 2 on VHS this one is a lot harder to find than the original video violence on VHS uh, this is pretty much Howard and Eli from the original who now have their public access television show of them killing off uh, you know, their guests getting submissions from other people, killing people. Um, amazing one, not shot as great as um, part one. I know Video Violence part one was shot on three quarter inch Umatic. This one was shot on uh, half inch, half inch video, I believe. And um, the quality on half inch compared to a uh, three quarter inch uh, differentiates a lot, but another amazing one to have in the collection. And of course, we cannot forget about the Die Hard Video Gore Edition put out by Cam Motion Pictures. And for any shot on video film, no matter if it's the best or the worst, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to quality of product. This is one of the best pieces to have in any retro horror fan's collection. Just amazing detail on every inch of this box, just the video studio label, the three-day rental sticker, and inside it even gets better, because inside you get, if this thing will open for me, inside you get two tapes with part one and part two on it, and these are, I believe, the cut versions of Video Violence part one and two, I'm not sure, and inside you get membership cards to the video studio as well as a uh, I'm a lifer pin as well as a cam motion pictures button and on DVD you get the uh, 2013 director's cut where he Gary Cohen pretty much cut out a lot from video violence part one and two and combine them to make one full film which is a pretty interesting experiment and then you get um, a mail-in order for a video violence t-shirt a alternative cinema catalog as well as a poster with this artwork on it from the uh, front but again amazing amazing release once again put out by cam motion pictures well that's shot on video for you it's something that started in the video stores boomed in such a cult phenomenon now like i said in the beginning there's some shot on video films or um, things that were shot on video that either I don't have or haven't shown in the collection. You know, porn was shot on video, um, soap operas were shot on video, even newscasts were shot on video. Even science videos that I saw years ago when I was in first or second grade were shot on video. Now there's other films shot on video or, you know, the footage was shot on video but then put on DVD or VHS and those are shockumentaries, real films, you know, death films, reality, stunt films. I have a bunch of those, but I haven't shown them in this episode just because I don't think it would fit too well, but next time we'll take a look at the shockumentary films that I have. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you dislike it, hit that thumbs down button. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever it is you guys do. Once again, my name is Steve from Shock Extreme Productions, and until next time, See y'all later.